guys, the AG11 Studios here. This is Tenny, not me, clearly. I'm not in the mood to show my face. We've got most of the cast here. All of the main characters from this past season, plus those of you who kind of made a disappearance. This is a QA. and a I asked for questions. I got questions, and I appreciate you sending in your questions. Okay, just so everyone's aware, there are going to be major spoilers. So if you haven't seen the show, please go watch it. I'm gonna spoil literally everything. Leah and the AG dolls asks, are you going to make a series that has the old characters? The answer is, unfortunately, no, because the story with these characters is mostly wrapped up, but the world, there's so much to it. There's a hundred years of this readiness. Like, I could go into any of these eras that this exists. Rainbow Pie says, Ezra, exclamation, exclamation, exclamation. Come back to life. You can't leave Alessa like that. Use magic, Alessa. Sobbing emoji. Yeah, you know, that that would have been helpful. He already came back to life at the end of season 5. So we can't exactly do it again because the spell already worked on him once. So, like, he was already past his time. It counted as, like, their one shot at being revived, you know? And it's also a very intensive spell. Like, Alessa literally died doing it. A few people asked, basically, in a gist of it, how did I come up with this series? And this series was semi-inspired by the Japanese internment camps that happened mid-1940s because there were a lot of racial tensions against Japanese during that time because, you know, they were the war, like people were against Germans too, but it wasn't to the same extent because Germans are white. We learned about this, this sheet of paper that they all had to fill out basically seeing how much Japanese ancestry that they had. Anyway, so that just got me thinking into like, what if everyone had to take that sort of test and like, what if it wasn't just like an internment camp, like they actually executed them all. AG Theater Kid and AG Darlings asked basically, what was the hardest scene to film? I really think Julius and I can agree on the fact that Ezra's scene was like, so hard to film. That was one of the hardest things like we've, either of us have ever had to do. I didn't have to do much, but yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> For me, I think it was more of, you know, having to deal with when Ryder was really brainwashed by the government during season three, that was really hard for me because like, I knew that it wasn't Ryder, but I had to basically come up with a whole new character for him. I think all those of us whose, you know, characters died at one point can attest that our character's death was the hardest scene to film because, you know, we died. <laughs> I'm gonna second that. It, it's not, not exactly the most fun thing to do. Yeah, see, Arenas was really drawn out, so I had that problem of not accepting the fact that I knew what was gonna happen, but I didn't really want it to happen, so it, it was like an entire season I spent acting like dying, so that was fun. Not fun, you know what I mean. Yeah, see, mine was hard because, you know, Rachel was such a upbeat character and she was the youngest out of all of them, so she was the most innocent in that way. So yeah, so I think all five of us who at one point were dead or dying. I think we're all in agreement. I don't know about Carson, yours makes sense, but like, yeah, I think we got you beat. The hardest scene for Alexa and I was when Athena came out to Mary because it was such a sensitive topic and neither of us have much experience in it. It was so sensitive and it was so, like we really wanted to make sure we did it right, but in the end it ended up being one of your guys' favorite scenes because like a lot of people like were so grateful that we had done something like that. So it was really rewarding. For both of us. Yeah, I have to, I have to admit that's like, it was an emotional moment because, you know, we had to accept this new part of our characters that we really hadn't really delved into. This is a really uncommon thing for this type of show to do. For us to do it was really hard because there wasn't any precedent for us to look at. We just kind of had to do it. AG Darlings also asked, um, what was your favorite scene to film? So now we're gonna go around and say our favorite scenes. It's hard to narrow down a favorite. Honestly, episode seven of this last season, I mentioned how hard it was to film that scene, but it was where Julius and I had to like explore Ezra's like really like childhood, you know? Like she didn't really know her childhood, like his childhood, because she had assumed that she, he'd been born on the run, you know? But he hadn't, and he had like this whole like life, and it was all like, it all stayed there because no one saw any value in any of it to steal. You know, I loved ripping into that, um, Isabel. Yeah, Isabel. I loved ripping into her because I was lying in a hospital bed all hooked up to machines and everything, and I got to just like 
brutally beat her. So that was fun to do. Honestly, season five, where, where Alessa and I were kind of like totally brainwashed by the destroyers, that was, I mean, so much fun for me because it was, a, like I said, Ryder had so many different characters. So it was cool to explore that. Alessa and Ryder then were just so, like they were, they were basically unhuman. Like Odin, Odin was basically trying to get a whole army of these kinds of people. Mackenzie had a big character shift and it was really, it was really fun to like explore that because she was this really upbeat kind of person before and she went, obviously, you know, what she went through, you know, dying and everything and then being brought back to life and then having the burden of Sane's death upon her and then eventually having to go, like being kidnapped by the destroyers, like that was a very traumatic experience for her. It totally silenced her, like, and creativity it changed her so much and it was really interesting to explore it. I liked coming out of the bushes. That was a really awesome character entrance. I, I enjoyed doing that. I liked spooking Julius. That happened a lot. I spooked him a lot. She's wrong. She's lying. She didn't spook me at all. Literally not lying. You can literally ask anyone. Tara Lynn backed me up on this. She got you pretty good a couple times there. This is what I count on you for and you're, you're ruining it. Again, like I said, that scene um, where Athena comes out, that was a really important scene and I also really enjoyed filming it. I really just liked everything I did with that character. Just like as a whole, her character was like so much fun to do because she was like, she literally says wicked quotes to like foreshadow things. I, I really enjoyed doing that phone conversation with Tessa because Tessa who plays Diana Porter, I don't know how many people caught that, but it was actually me. It was Sasha. It's just like a fun little tidbit. So like those of you who watch this video and those of you who may have caught it before. Yeah, Sasha Sasha and Diana Porter were like, Sasha was her, her entrance into the movement. I love doing all the flashback scenes because it really started to give Arena and Ezra depth, especially in their relationship as siblings. They didn't really get a lot of that and everything that they did get before them was basically a lie. They had both lied to a lot of people about their past to actually show really what what their past was, was really interesting to see. I have a specific scene. I'm pretty sure, it, well, it had to be season three because it was my last season. It was just me and Julius. It was Ezra and Rachel. And they just kind of chatted and realized that their thing, their little thing that they've, they'd basically been trying to cover up. Ezra barely saw any other people. Like Ezra was the only guy that Rachel really knew. So they really just accepted the fact that no, you, we, only really liked each other back then because we didn't really know anyone else. And so they really accepted that and then, you know, the next episode I went and, you know, got shot and died and everything. A couple people asked basically like, how, how does the series have such an emotional impact? I kind of said that a little more eloquently than they did. So everything's scripted ahead of time. So that's why I can go in and I can add foreshadowing and I can add character moments and I can add like little punchlines because I'm not doing it all on the spot. I write a lot. I took a screenwriting class last year. Like I've really tried to figure out how best to, you know, impact people through writing. Writing is really the biggest part of this. Why you guys are really attached to these characters and I'm really attached to these characters because I spend so much time developing them. Cool Girl Hope asks, was it hard for you to end the series and how I feel about that ending? <gasps> The answer is yes. I would keep it going. Like, that's why I came up with this series is because, like, I could do, like, 20 seasons of this show because they lived in the wilderness. They were literally BSing their way through surviving. After season five, I was starting to get really exhausted with it. Like, the Toronto thing was supposed to be, like, that they were destroyers, actually. That was the original idea. I decided against that. That made it, made it be like, oh, well then, maybe they could actually, you know, solve it through this and they did. I thought, you know, that's a lot more realistic than expecting to be able to crash a, crash a party and not, you know, all die. AG Snugbug asks who my favorite character is and who my favorite relationship is. Thank you, by the way. I love it more than Aspen Heights too, especially because, you know, I kept it running. I, I actually finished it. Just... So my favorite character is definitely Rachel. My favorite relationship is Marina, definitely, just because they're just adorable. I love every single character combination or else I wouldn't make it a character combination because they're just, they're, there's reasons why they're all compatible. EGF Fun asks, 
if any of you actors are in a real relationship. Well, um, at the rap party I proposed to Tarolyn, so yeah, we're together. We I don't think that should come as a surprise to any of you. Carson and I had a little stint, but that was that really happened before the series really took off. It just didn't work out, but Julius and I have really worked out, so that's really nice. Adrian Fun also asks how it was um, kissing your roommates. Most of us aren't related, so it's fine. We're actors, you know? So we're acting, but I I probably would have drawn the line at Terrell. Yeah, I don't really think she'd be that good of a kisser anyway, so. Alexa, what do you think? Um, I'm not gonna get into this. She also asks, um, do you wish you could have changed anything in the series? Yes, I really do. Like, honestly, if I had to go back, Rachel wouldn't have died. I would have um, had Ezra be, like, more... He wouldn't really be so open with the group. He was really secretive t towards the beginning, but I kind of lost that. Like, and there were a lot of references that I would have gotten rid of, because the thing is, is that there were so many plot holes created by the fact that, you know, Ezra's from Toronto and everything. AG Fairy Lights asked, how did I come up with the characters' names, and how did I pick um, who played who? So character names, at the beginning I really like cared about like the meaning, like Alessa means defender, Ryder means messenger, Mackenzie means wise, Ezra means help, Arena, I just kind of like the name Arena. Miriam is a prophetess in the Bible, Athena also means wise, Ophelia is a crazy woman in a Shakespeare play, Sasha, Sasha means something, Rachel means lamb, Sasha also means something, but I don't know what it means. They are on it. No. Oh, it's dead. Casting, on the other hand, I had a really big problem with. I needed someone with hazel eyes because I had to like show the fact that, you know, Alessa's eyes were unique. So originally it was going to be like she was the only character that had this specific eye color and it ended up that not being... I bought Tara Lynn for this purpose. It was also because she was retiring, but I was like, oh, 38's retiring? She'd make a good Alessa. Let's buy her. That was my casting process for that. With the new series, like I actually spend time like thinking which really fits the character, but like I, I, I wanted to get 55 for Athena, but I ended up not doing that because I was like, I'm not gonna spend all this money on a doll just for one character. Sunset T Dolls asks, how did I come up with the different characters and how they affect the series? So this is more of a conceptual question. They really evolve over the course of time. So at the beginning, I really had Alessa's character figured out. Ezra's character was like, like character as in like how they act sort of thing, personality wise. Alessa Ryder and Mackenzie all had like sort of a backstory. Most of them, their backstories have evolved with time. Like Mary had her boyfriend that was taken in. My character process is basically just seeing what character serves the story. The characters are built to fit the series. The series is not built to fit the characters, if that makes sense. Like if, if your character isn't serving your story, then you don't need that character. AG OG Dolls asks, what happens with Miriam and Athena? I know they're together, but what does their future hold? I've always found it hard to believe that people, that like characters at the end of a series end up with characters from the series. They really are compatible, but they're both young. So I do think that they're um, happy together. Mary went to track school for, she wanted to do cello, but she couldn't do cello because her parents wouldn't let her. Maybe she would go back to school and um, get a performance degree. Athena really likes to write, you know, so she, I think she would try to do that. I think they work really well together, but they're, they are, like you said, um, Sylvia, they are really new. Maybe they would, maybe they wouldn't, but I think they will, and I think they will live happily ever after together. Random Doll Studios also asked, um, which character is most like you, and I think that Mary is a lot like me, like, just like, probably the person who's most like me, but like there's parts of me in all these characters. So they really have a piece of me in them. Drama Queen asks, was it hard to do voice acting? Athena's accent was really tricky to get down, but you know, once you get down, once you get something like really down, then it really works. I think her character was the hardest to, to act as because she was, I also had to think about, you know, my accent like literally the entire time because like I'm not British. John McQueen also asks, if you were in Alessa's shoes, would you pick Ezra and Ryder? Also, thank you for your very sweet comments. Tara Lynn, would you pick Ezra or Ryder? Lots of pressure weighs in on you on this decision. Julius is going to kick me out if I don't say Ezra. So, Ezra, I wouldn't kick you out. I, I would just, you know, ask you why and if I need to answer to someone else. I'm saying Ezra, but I really think I would pick Ryder just because she's known him the longest and she's They've really gone through a lot together, just not, like, not just because of escape artist sting, I guess. Because Ezra and Alessa grew so close because of 
their like really monumental experience together. But Ryder and Alessa were so close because they literally grew up together. Like they've known each other since they were four years old. And I think that's a lot more realistic to think that if you fall in love with that guy, you know him like really well. Ezra and Alessa are still kind of an unknown. And I guess, you know, if he's lived, they'd still kind of be an unknown. Like they, they love each other, but it's like, do you really know how much they love each other? Because they haven't really stood the test of time yet. Yep, I'm gonna steal your girl, Julius. Literally do not even joke about this. This was my one shot and I am enjoying it. So shut up, Carson. AG Darlings asks, how did the impact of the series and how much everyone loves it affect you? And that's like really crazy to me. Like I got nominated for a Sophie Award, like in what world? And then there's like the added like, there's so many people, like there's 13 people who commented questions on this Q&A. It's such a crazy thought to think that everyone like really watches it and really enjoys it and is really passionate about it. And it's really changed me like in a lot of ways because it's made me so motivated to continue this channel even if I didn't, like of course I want to, but it's like, like every single person who watches my videos is another reason why I'm gonna keep, keep doing this. Did you ever think you would get this far? No, <laughs> I did not. <laughs> me going to boarding school, could have like completely killed off my channel, but I didn't let it. Like I spent so long that summer before filming. I could have literally just let my channel die over the school year and I was not about to let that. So I did two and a half seasons, like scheduled them to upload and like did them ahead of time. So it's like who does that for one and for two, like most people who go to school and they, <laughs> and they, do, they don't really care about um, continuing their channel, or if they do, they don't really obsessively pre-film like I do. <laughs> Whose death was the hardest for you as directors and actors to deal with? Yeah. Ezra. Do we, like, even need to go around in a circle for this? Because I'm I'm pretty sure we're all gonna be um, in unison. Ezra. It, it was Ezra. Uh, yeah, it, it was. You're right. Ezra was really hard to deal with, mostly because we all had to sit in a, like, in a church and, like, be sad and have a funeral basically for him on screen like the others didn't really have that so we really had to like really accept the fact that this character was dead you know yeah Ezra I I died and it was Ezra I wasn't even in it when Ezra you know died and I'm still gonna have to say Ezra but like my death was pretty hard on him so you know that works out again wasn't even in it gotta say Ezra oh thanks guys I appreciate how much you all care about my demise you know what would be great is if I didn't die. That way, I would like that. I, I would appreciate that. This show could have gone on and I could have lived. Like, I, I, I didn't have to. Like, it's fine. I'm fine. I'm not affected by this character's death in any way. Dolls and Books says, I just wish Ezra didn't die. So do I. Leah and the AG Dolls asks, in Spell River, it had a sign that says something about coming back in 2019. That was really just so I could leave the option open. That's why we didn't do something like this for Spell River, because Spell River could come back. Like, I'm not, I literally, I still haven't ruled it out. It was a really open ending, but a lot of people liked the open ending, so I'm not sure whether or not I'm gonna go back and continue it. It's M. Fryer asks, why was the beginning of this series kind of like the movie The Thinning? The Thinning, the thinning came out after this. So the real question here is, why is the movie The Thinning kind of like the beginning of the escape artist. I'm still bitter. Cool Girl Hope asks, do you think you will be making a new series soon? I really do think so. I have an idea. It's got kind of the same feel, but it's more fantasy. It's kind of like the escape artist and shadow hunters and Percy Jackson. Look forward to that. Probably not until next year though. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, do like. That would be super great. If you're not subscribed and you watch through this whole video and you also have watched the, all of the escape artists, Please subscribe. I love you. Um, <laughs> bye guys.